Hey, Comic Book Nation, BD here at New York Comic Con. I'm with Sam Mendez, uh, director of Skyfall, but today we're talking 1917. You guys just had a presentation here uh, in New York City, and I mean, the footage we've saw, we've seen is incredible, but hearing you guys talk about the work that went into this, bringing one shot to life, it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so just talk to me about uh, like just con getting everybody on board and, and how you kind of conveyed that idea to everybody and made sure that this was possible. Well, it, you know, I actually wrote it on the front page of the script. I said, this is going to be one shot. You know, so it's kind of like saying, if you don't want to do a one shot movie, don't do this. Don't open the script. But when you read the script, it made sense, I think. Um, it's two hours of real time. It's two guys following them through the the destroyed landscape of World War One in 1917. Um, it goes through so many different locations, so many different places, so many different emotional states, and it's what happens to these boys on their journey. So it, it made sense when you read it. Then in terms of actually achieving it, it is incredibly complicated, but we had a long time to do it, and I had you know, the greatest living cinematographer by my side. I'm just Roger Deakins' director, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, he, I mean, his work is amazing. Uh, but you also have some really incredible cast in front of the camera as well, mm -hmm. some talent in front of the camera. Uh, what was it like? Because, I mean, they have so much experience themselves, but obviously this is something different. Yeah. So what was it like to kind of have to retrain them to do something like this? It was interesting, actually, because you did have people like Colin Firth and Benedict Cumberbatch and Andrew Scott kind of nervous because they, they just they couldn't do their five, six, seven, eight minute take, you know, in a series of close ups or coverage, you know, you can work on it in little bits. You had to get it all right in one take. And I know that sounds kind of obvious in a way, but when you've done you've got a six minute take, let's say, and you make a mistake in the last three seconds of the take. So you have a five minute, fifty five second perfect take. And then the last moment it you blow it, you have to start again. And so that you know, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like a nightmare in that respect when you said it sounds like a nightmare there were times when i thought you know no please no right at the end something went wrong um but the exhilaration and the feeling when you get it right and the feeling when you've got it is so it's such a high yeah. it's a kind of drug you you wanted you want to do it again and we we fed off that in excitement and that energy all the way through so that's what that's what got us through i think so the last thing i want to know from you is it's all one shot in the end do you have any estimate or kind of guess how many times there are different takes that end up being the stitch together no, it's all one shot it's all one shot we shot this in a day everybody nailed it it's incredible man <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you can't it's wait to see 1917 thank you. sam mendez everybody hey comic book nation bd here at new york comic con we just got out of the panel for 1917 the movie looks incredible and if you don't know it's all one continuous shot it's a war movie it takes place over two hours uh and the man who brought that to life uh, with the cinematography is the legendary roger deakins first of all thank you for taking the time um but second let's talk about this because the challenges behind this just seem unbelievable. What was it, the hardest part, kind of understanding how to cut things together because it's not all, you know, seamless one take, but then you also have to understand the script and you have to understand your actors. What were, what were some of those challenges? Well, uh, the, the, yeah, the biggest challenge was to sort of be, have the camera connected to the character so it was in the right place to tell the story, to get the right reactions, to get, you know, see the scene, see the surroundings. So it's like a, it, it was like a big dance. It's always that. Any film you do, you, you're figuring, oh, where do we want to play this wide? Where we do, do we need to see a reaction? What is the, the best angle? But obviously here, all that had to work as one. So it was very much for Sam to stage the action and us to stage the camera in, in, in a sort of balletic way that each complemented the other, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Because when you think about it, you know, like you look at it first off and you think, okay, there's these two guys wandering down a trench line or running. Sure. Where are you? You're behind them, but then do you want to be behind them all the time? How do you, you know, how do you show the rest of the world? How do you show their expressions and their you know, be on them when you needed to be on them. So was that sort of stuff laid out in the script? Because I know the first page said, no, this no, is one no. shot. So then is that no. you're reading the script and you guys are all kind of coming up with, okay, we should be here. Well, that's a, that's much, that was the, the whole process of us, Sam and I, sort of starting storyboarding it, doing images and then playing around with ideas and then working with the actors and rehearsing with them and seeing, well, if we went there and they went there, you know, it's... Uh, so the whole thing takes place in two hours, but it's it's kind of a series of shots that you guys went through to get it done. What do you think is the longest single 
take that the actors had to learn their lines and deliver, the crew had to learn their movements and their focus and light, everything. What do you think was the longest? Um, I think the longest was about eight and a half minutes. And you know, the thing about doing something that long is it's obviously it's a lot of complex choreography. And then, and the longer the shot goes on, say if I'm operating on a remote head, a remote stabilized system I'm sitting there and Andy my Andy Harris my focus bullet sitting there and we're all going you get towards the end you think no if anybody make makes a mistake then you've got all that other seven and a half minutes to go back and start again and there might be explosions and all you know so the pressure builds with the length of the shot it's interesting and then when, the, when you come experience that normally when you when right, you do cuts right. you know. so but then when you come to a cut and it's time to kind of you get to restart and be, begin the next bit yeah. how do you kind of master that transition so well, that it you maintains have to, you have to make sure sometimes the sh shot we had to do a shot again because the, the the camera and the way the camera moved at the end didn't really sync with how we imagined we were going to go into the next shot as it were and you know so the blends might be from one location and three weeks later you pick or a couple of weeks later you pick it up in another location somewhere totally different and you've got to match where you're coming out of so that, that's where you kind of get in trouble i'm sweating just thinking about it <laughs> oh my gosh we saw one clip during that presentation just now i don't know how many people you had on set but it's this incredible sequence the trailer's available now if you haven't watched it i suggest watching it but i mean it looks like he's coming out of a trench you have hundreds of, of soldiers running across the field you have explosions I, I i can't even imagine the moving parts how many people do you think was the most you had on set at one moment that all had to work in sync together that that might have been, there were 500 extras, I understand it, but uh, there was also two grips who had to be in costume, that, who ran across the camera after the camera went through, because the camera comes off one crane, then it's handheld, and, and it's a sta stabilized system, and so the, these grips are walking with, they hand it off to a couple of other grips, then it's handed off to a crane, rigged on a crane, as all on the move, and then, it, then this, uh, the crane, the last train's on a tracking vehicle, and then it tracks for over a quarter of a mile with George running. And it's your so, job to come up with how those transitions for the camera work, yeah. too. But what I was going to say, then, then there's like 20 or 30 grips working with the vehicles and the crane arms. And when the camera gets taken off the crane, obviously the weight goes and the crane arm goes like that. So you've got to get all these grips to hold it. So. So there's a, a huge wow. complexity, but hopefully when people see it, you won't be aware of that. It's just like the camera's following the action and, and you're there, you know. Well, I can't wait to see the whole thing, man. Thank you so much for taking the time Pleasure. to talk and great work. Pleasure. You made it. <laughs> hey, Comic Book Nation, BD here at New York Comic Con. I'm with Dean Charles Chapman. We're talking about 1917 where you play a soldier named Blake, yep. but you play a soldier named Blake for two hours nonstop. There is not a single cut. Uh, what is it like for you on set? What are the challenges of that? I think the most challenging thing for me was uh, Blake's stakes throughout the whole film are so high because not only is he trying to save 1,600 people's lives but he's trying to save his brother li brother's right, life right. as well and to be able to turn up every day on set even in the rehearsals we rehearsed for six months and, uh, and then we shot it for like three or four months so be able to turn up on set every day every single take to be able to portray that high intensity was very draining. So do you, do you yeah. feel like as you get, I mean I heard there's shots that go up to eight minutes long individually, do you feel like you get into a rhythm like almost like you're in a play mm -hmm. and you kind of find a stride or is that easier or harder? No definitely it, it takes a while to, to find that, I mean even with the six months rehearsals that we'd had to prepare ourselves for the day of filming I still found myself like what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Wait what am I doing again? Um, but yeah I mean literally after a few takes you'd find the swing of it, you'd, you'd, it's just like it's like anything, the more you do it, the more you, you become adapted to it. Yeah, I bet, I yeah. bet. Uh, and you're on a mission to rescue your brother. It's World War One. it looks. I mean, there's explosions, there's bodies flying. It's, it's wild. But uh, you have your director, Sam Mendes, who's done some incredible action sequences in other films. Did you get to get in on any of that? And how, did, how do you guys possibly pull off those kind of crazy stunts and sequences mm. where you don't get to take a break from it in the middle of it? Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, I felt like every scene was really action-packed. <laughs> I, I mean, n none of it was, yeah. uh, none of it's the standstill, it's always on the move. It just follows these two soldiers that are constantly on a journey to get to that side in a matter of hours. It's a race against time. So, yeah, very tough. But, I mean, again, six months rehearsals, we were half sort of prepared to do it. So. How good of friends did you guys become offset because you were working so closely together on set? Yeah, I mean, George, I mean, we actually didn't know anybody, uh, anybody, we didn't know each other before we started this, this film. Oh, we actually wow. met in the audition. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I love George. You ask anybody who knows George, they would turn around and say the exact same thing. He is honestly the nicest person I've ever met in my life, and I swear to God. And also, to top it off, he's an unbelievable actor. His performance in this film is... It looks like legit. you guys really brought everything you had out there. I tried. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I can't wait to see it. And I've got to ask you one thing, because you were on a show I really love, and uh, it's called Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, nice. So listen, uh, nice. you, you played a character whose parents, I feel like, got off the hook a little bit easy. What do you th what do you think of uh, that finale? Not the finale episode, but the finale for your character's parents. Well, honestly, I've got to admit, I didn't watch it. You didn't watch it. Nah, I, but I know what happens. I did, I did like the cast told me what happened. Right, right, right. But um, and I actually I did see a YouTube clip of their ending. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, it is what it is, and there's so many different alternative endings that could possibly happen. I mean, either way, they suffered. So. That's what you get. Cersei might have got what she deserved a little bit. I well, appreciate it, man. I can't wait to see 1917. Yeah, Congratulations, the movie looks amazing. Yeah, thanks, mate. Hey, Comic Book Nation BD here at New York Comic Con with George McKay. We just watched the 1917 panel. Uh, if you don't know, this movie's all one continuous shot, which for you as an actor, you're playing Schofield in this movie. Mm -hmm. World War I, I feel like you actually went to battle. This, was, this had to be an intense shoot. Tell me about the challenges of this one take uh, atmosphere you guys were trying to create. Yeah, it's 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 an amazing thing, like because you have to be. I mean, you, you're doing these. We shot in very long sequences, so you kind of get lost in it, and it becomes very real. The doing of it and the sets were so amazing, and the physicality of it was 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 real. But then, by the same token, you have to be so technically aware that it was a really good kind of lesson in collaboration because a take wouldn't work or a scene wouldn't work unless everything was working in harmony like you're the cam you're influencing the camera move the camera moves influencing you and you're both influenced by the set so it was a kind of real beautiful handoff all of the time all right so moment of truth was there a point where you got to like six minutes into an eight minute take and you were like oh line yeah <laughs> yeah not lines not lines <laughs> but there's things of like oh that shouldn't have fallen off i shouldn't have slipped over there sometimes you get but sometimes there are there are beautiful mistakes as well like sometimes that's the thing is that's the magic of film is that if you you know you're capturing a moment and if that moment if it wasn't expected but it you know it serves the scene then that's that's going to be in there yeah. so you also i mean you have some really veteran incredible actors in there by your side as well colin firth benedict cumberbatch you're working with dr strange dude no big deal yeah. uh so what was it but i mean when they get on set because nobody's used to this this is new to everybody no matter how much you've done they've done this is new to everybody yeah. so what was it like to kind of work with these guys and learn together it's it's great because again it has that like that mutual that mutual feeling because it's it's all new for everyone so you're all feeling this thing out and you know and you'll have certain points of reference you know having it's a bit like doing a play sometimes so it's that you might be sort of sharing an experience on that but it's it kind of felt like a kind of pioneering thing it felt like obviously there's been films made to appear in in one take before but it's it felt new it felt like this was this was our own thing and it felt really unique so I don't know I think. I don't know, we felt, we felt pretty equal in that when yeah. working together and trying to make it. It's amazing, dude. Congrats on working with some legends, and the movie looks great. The last thing for you, there's a shot in the new trailer, which if you guys haven't watched the new trailer, highly recommend watching that now, well, when we're done here, but then go watch it. But uh, you're coming out of this trench, hundreds of people running behind you, explosions all around. I mean, I just want to hear, like, is all of that real? Is there, like, stuff blowing up behind you? What, it, what do you do to get ready for that and, like, to get through that? Yeah, it's all real. That's the thing about this film is that, given the like you know the one shot nature is that you can't. I mean, of course, there's a there's a tiny bit, but sure, but sure. otherwise, pretty much everything in the film is physically real. Is a physical effect. There, it is real. All of those men, they're, they're not CG'd. We had, I think, four hundred men, you know, coming out of that trench. So I mean, it's it was the most exhilarating thing to do. It was so tense and so exciting. But you know, when you when you when you get, you know, when you get to the end of that day it's like it's the most extraordinary experience amazing well i bet you were never so relieved to hear the word cut in your life <laughs> and that's where we'll call it guys thank you so much for the time and uh, go see 1917 everybody cut